Peace, brothers and sisters. Once again, thank the Lord. I have an opportunity to share His words with you today. I know a uh, fam, uh, couple uh, who is uh, over 70 years old. But the husband and wife argue often. Even though they lived their whole entire life already, they still doesn't understand certain things. How come there are so many couples who are not uh, in harmonious, in harmony? Um, maybe they don't understand. But Christians, we have God's teaching. God's word we have just read. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you that uh, we come before you. We worship you. We want to lift up your name high. We want to give you glory through our personal life and our family. Uh, this world is chaotic and it's falling apart, and we have uh, this physical body. Therefore, our physical body that is decaying cannot glorify you. Lord, may you speak, us, speak to us once again today. May you please cleanse uh, the lip of your servant. So that the words that are coming out of me will be directly from you. So that I can say your words clearly. So that those who are listening and uh, those who are speaking uh, would be edified together. May you lead the following time. And give all the glory to you. Pray this all in the name of Lord Jesus. Uh, from the scripture uh, previously, that today my sermon title is Good Marriage in the Eyes of the Lord. There's two points uh, that I can share today. And the first point is wife's duty is to submit to their husbands. There are many wives that are not willing to submit to their husbands today, these days. So therefore, they have red light in their marriage, and there's problem that arise. But as Christians, we are to listen to God's words. Uh, wives, our duties is to submit to your husband. What is the role of submission? Wives, in the same way, submit yourself to your own husband. Uh, to submit it is God's command. Wives, you're to submit to your own husband. I know there are ladies who are very, uh, have a lot of abilities, might ask, why do I have to do this? Um, the sisters who have more ability, is it harder for them to submit to their husbands? Or maybe because you are better, quote unquote, than your husband, you do not have to submit to him. When a wife asks, why do I have to submit to my husband? Actually, when you look into the Bible, I'll give you the answer. When God created man, he created man first and then woman. In Genesis 1, chapter 27, it clearly states, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. So God created male and then female. And Paul also gave us some teaching. Uh, 
Uh, he says in 1 Corinthians 11, 3, but I want you to realize that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. In another word, Husband is the head of the wife. Sisters who are already in marriage or sisters who are headed towards marriage, you have to understand that husband is your head. Your husband is your head. So therefore, you have to be submissive to your husband. Those who have went into the military, you know you have to obey to your higher-ups. Of course, in marriage, there's no who's, uh, who's had higher level, who's lower level. It's just first and then second. Of course, Paul continued in 1 Corinthians, a man ought not to cover his head since he is the image, uh, uh, imagined glory of God, but woman is the glory of man. For man did not come from woman, but woman from man. Neither was man created for woman, but woman for man. So therefore, women, we have to understand that there are certain things that we have to have authority over. I, I, understand, I can see that some sisters don't understand uh, where your role is uh, in, this, uh, in, in your, in your uh, marriage life. So in the stage of life, God gives the role of submission to our sisters. It is not because God values men and belittles women. It's actually God giving us a special command and special uh, recognition. Uh, we men, uh, I often feel like we might lack something and we won't be able to co-labor as well. But the role and the characteristic God has created, it must be perfect. God gave the role to the sister to be submissive so that it it's not only a command, but it's another thing to glorify God. Once again, I say, God gives the role of submission to sisters, so that, uh, sister, you can glor uh, show the glory of Christ. Glorify Christ, it's not a one-time one -time thing once and done. It's a lifetime practice. So every time you're willing to submit to your husband, you're actually living like Christ. If a producer asks you to be the main character uh, in the cast, you'll be very excited. And if you get the main character, you do you all your best to try to achieve uh, or to make it uh, to make it worthy. What is better than you being able to show uh, show glory of Christ? Why do I say that? We see that in Philippians chapter 2, it records this. Uh, uh, Christ and, the, uh, and God, they are uh, equal. Uh, in here it says, who, uh, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. 
He obeyed uh, humbly. He was willing to submit uh, to the point of death. Today, we wives, we have to submit to our husbands just like how Christ uh, submit to the Lord. He willing, uh, willing to go on the cross. Once again, I said, a, a wife submit to your husband not as if you were lower, but it is the role, your role as a wife. It is, it is for your own benefit and it is for your marriage. Of course, it is also to show glory and glorify God. Uh, just like Christ uh, submit to uh, to God. And secondly, we move to the purpose of submission. Why do I have to submit to my husband? If any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. Wives who submit to your husband, you will be able to win your husband who might not be believing uh, to the Lord. If your husband is not a believer, through your actions, through your obedience, through your submission to him, they will be won over to Christ. Or maybe you say, hey, my husband has been a believer for years. Maybe some, uh, some wives who are not submissive to their husband and they don't have a good relationship to, to a point, even though the wife shows up to church, their hearts are not there. Some husband will say to me, hey, even though I know God is almighty, but look at my wife, she's not changed by God. A husband who used to attend church regularly, but due to the reason, due to the wife not submitting to him, he actually no longer goes to church. So wife submitting to your husband, it's very important because that's how God will continue to be able to affect your husband. In Peter's time, there were many sisters who believed in Jesus. But their husbands were not believers. So therefore, the husband and wife have some conflicts. Uh, what do you do? So therefore, it was taught to the sisters to obey and submit to your husbands so that you can show Christ through your actions and therefore uh, you will be able to win your husband over for Christ. I've been to a decent amount of churches and noticed that there are many sisters who believe uh, more than brothers. Or even to a point there, the sister has been a believer for, uh, for decades, but the husband is still not a believer. So I often tell the sister, you should bring your husband to church. And 
uh, the sister will often tell me it's very difficult, it's very challenging. May you please pray for me uh, so that the time will come. Uh, I say to the sister, you can't just ask me to pray for that once and the brother come. You have to do your duties uh, as a submitting wife so that you are, your actions can affect your husband and be able to bring him to church. Uh, sisters amongst us who are married, is your husband a believer? Is your husband here? What is the most attractive things that you have uh, for your husband? I know everyone uh, nowadays loves fashion. fashion 也没有错, it is not wrong to have uh, our uh, fashion, uh, but it's more important to have an inward, uh, inward characteristic. Uh, we understand that we know Jesus, wherever he goes, he was able to bring positive attitudes uh, to the area that he went. Sisters who love to put on makeup, as, the, as long it uh, doesn't matter how much you like to put on makeup, there's, uh, there's one moment where you have to take it off. So when you go to a party, when you look around, the brothers who bring their wives, the wives are all gorgeous. Because they know how to put on makeup, uh, to prepare themselves outward appearance. Some people might have too much makeup that they don't look like themselves anymore. You look at them and go, is that really you? Uh, we might say, what is... Uh, Oh, how do you describe someone who looks, uh, the more you look at them, the, the prettier they get? It is not just one time uh, makeup. It is not outward appearance. I'm not saying you don't do anything outward appearance wise, dressing nicely, etc. What I mean is to look inward and prepare the inward beauty. Here it tells us the inward beauty is more important than outward uh, appearance. Uh, many sisters these days, they look at their ring and look at how many carats it is. But here in Christ, it tells us, uh, sisters, we have to have uh, gentleness uh, all around, from within. The gentleness from within, it cannot be purchased, it cannot be uh, uh, brought up. The gentleness uh, that is from within is actually due to your relationship with Christ, everyday edification and ed everyday modifying. We have to spend a lot of time to be changed, to be molded by Christ from within. The more you are Christ-like each and every day, the more you're able to affect your husband who is near you. In the Confession of St. Augustine, uh, he recorded uh, a, uh, a passage. Uh, and he says, my father was uh, terrible. My mother, but my mother was a, a sister who feared the Lord. Uh, she is able to uh, persevere the, her husband not being faithful. Continuously live out Christ in front of uh, her husband. 
And eventually, she was able to soften uh, her husband's heart, and he was willing to turn back to Christ. For sisters, uh, in order for uh, submitting to a, a good uh, husband, it is not very hard. Uh, but in the Bible, it teaches uh, us sisters, in order for us to submit to our husband, we're submitting to the husband who might consider good or bad in your eyes. When your husband is good, it's not difficult for you to submit to him. But sometimes you might, you might realize that your husband is not very good. Your natural response is, mm, I'm not I don't want to submit to him. Or you might want to submit to him, but it's very difficult to do so. It is very difficult. But do you submit or not? You have to because it's God's role for you. That is God's command for you. Because God created you as a woman, as a female, to give you the role to submit to your husband. Because God wants to use you through your role as a wife, submitting to your husband, so that you can live out Christ and can get your husband to submit to Christ as well. So sisters, even though there is difficulty submitting to your husband, but you have to march forward. How? Actually, in the Bible, they give us an example of submission, a sister who submit to the husband. Let's look at the example. For this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to adorn themselves, they submitted themselves to their own husbands. Like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord, you are her daughter if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. So many sisters might say it is so easy for Sarah to submit to Abraham because we all know Abraham is uh, the father of faith. Actually, when we look back, when Sarah was submitting to Abraham, Abraham was actually horrendous. When Sarah was submitting to Sarah, uh, when Sarah was submitting to Abraham, Abraham was actually not the father of faith yet. He was actually very, very weak. In, if, in order for uh, Abraham to be considered the father of faith, uh, we have to remember the goodness from Sarah. When, when uh, Abraham was extremely weak, yet Sarah still submitted to, uh, to him. How did she do that? It is because she feared the Lord. When we look at Genesis, these two passages, we know how weak Abraham was. When God called Abraham, he had some faith, he was ready to move uh, to where God has called him to go. Um, but soon after uh, Abraham's faith was very weak, uh, due to famine, he moved down to Egypt. Egypt. And in order to save them their own lives, to save his own life, he teaches Sarah to lie. Because Sarah was gorgeous, was very pretty. 
And because she was very beautiful, he was afraid that people would kill him to, uh, to get Sarah. So he taught her to lie about her. Uh, about and that did not just occur once. It occurred, he made the same mistake once more in Gerar. He told uh, his wife to lie and say that she's his sister. Due to his weakness uh, and him saving his own life, he almost lost his wife to others. If you were Sarah, if sisters, if you were Sarah at that time, what would, how would you have felt and what would you have done? But Sarah did it. She submitted to her husband. She listened to her husband. Even though Abraham was weak in his faith, yet Sarah understood that he is the, the man that God wants her to submit to. Sisters, even if your husband is weak in his faith and weak in all other areas, you have to understand that that is the man that God wants you to submit to. But in, through the submission of Sarah, God is able to have Abraham more and more and build him up. I'm 100% sure that Abraham, in his life, he will, un, he will remember Sarah's submission to him and, able, and how God has pulled him back up from where he fell. We know that for us to uh, have people who uh, positively affect us, it's great. In the same way, uh, Sarah is that person to Abraham. If Sarah at that moment she got so pissed off, she just ignored the heck out of Abraham, then we would not have the father of faith. So there are sisters, uh, so therefore sisters, we have to learn to submit to our husbands. Holy Spirit, through Peter, uh, reminds the, uh, the wives again to obey and submit to your husband. When you're willing to submit to your husband in that way, you are expressing God's word uh, from, uh, 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 through your physical being. In the midst of difficulties, you're able to express your submission to your husband. So yeah, so that's through your uh, your life expression, you can win over your husband for Christ. So sisters who are already in marriage or headed towards marriage, you have to understand your duty. I have to say, men or husbands or brothers, we are not good enough. Uh, I am over 50 years old. I've been married for tw uh, over 20, uh, 28 years. I've lived, uh, uh, lived uh, long enough. But I know for a fact that men or husbands are not good enough. Without the help of our wives, we cannot be the good husband in front of God's eyes. Because in the Bible, it has already been said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I have to create a, a partner to help him. 
So the role of the wife, you are to help your husband. But these days we actually often see uh, sisters or wives, who, especially the ones who have, uh, who have extra abilities. They're not helping their husbands, they're actually confining their husbands. Uh, today you actually cannot confine your husband. The more you try to confine him, the more he repels. Uh, uh, wives, you cannot use your own abilities to influence your husband. Who can change your husband? Who? Only God can. God, of course, has all the abilities to change your husband, but he wants to involve you. Oftentimes, sisters shake their head and say, Ah, my, my husband cannot even pass. And I often say, Well, you're a pretty, sister, you're a pretty good teacher. I often wonder why the same way, why he can't pass. Like, he just keeps on failing. You can't use your own flesh, your anger from within. You have to do your own duties. You can't just sit, stand, stand afar and say, Oh, come on, keep going, you're doing great. You can't say from far, Oh, you're doing so terrible, you're a failure. Through your actions, through your life uh, experiences, you have to personally go over and help and assist your husband. Uh, I sometimes see a sister on their, on their neck, they have a bruise. Uh, they fought, physically fought. And then a short while after, another bruise on the arm. Very sad, very sorrowful. Oftentimes, as recently, a sister told me that my husband is like a, a buffalo. I don't know if sisters, you've ever mentioned that your, sister, your husband is like a buffalo. I'm sure many sisters have said that. Oftentimes, men are like a buffalo, a cattle. So when sister, you say your husband is like a buffalo or a cattle, what are you? My question for you is, are you a matador uh, full of battle scars or are you a happy cattleman? You're a cattleman sitting on the uh, on the buffalo on the cattle, you know, uh, on a leash, taking it to places and play pipe on uh, the cattle. What is your choice? Are you able to overcome uh, the cattle in your house? So let's change our strategy a little bit. We have to be gentle. Gentle overcomes strength. You can't overcome the, uh, the buffalo, the cattle in your house. May uh, God help us all sisters overcome all the uh, challenges uh, and go above so that we can sit, on, uh, the, uh, sit casually on the cattle. Often see God as the head of the household, and your marriage will be beautiful. So it is very important for the sisters because God gave the commands to sisters first. You have to take initiative. Uh, 
a, a marriage is like a seesaw. When you take, when you make an initiative on one side, the other side will respond. When you make the initiative, it is a win-win situation. Many sisters cannot submit to their husbands because they have bitterness and they have hatred in their heart. Many sisters remember uh, the quote unquote debt that the husband owed them 30, 40 years ago. Don't you feel like it's so tiring? We might not even be able to conclude. You might not even remember the things from last week. How can you remember all 30, think 40 years uh, debts that you have to calculate? Things that has happened in the, uh, yesterday, just let it go. Live today and onward each and every day. Forget about the past. In Sarah's heart, there is no bitterness or hatred. So therefore, she is able to submit. She does not hate her husband or have bitterness. It's because she fears the Lord. She chose not to hold grudges against him. Because Sarah understood that God has chosen her husband and she is to help him succeed. Not only their marriage will flourish, but they will also be able to affect and benefit uh, the generation. Is how important is the sister's duties? So therefore, sisters who are already married, is your marriage happy? Even if your marriage has a red light, you are still you still have time to be good godly uh, couples in God's eyes. The the key is the sister, the, the wife. You have to do on your duties. 一颗黄金被逃选出来之前，要先冲洗掉几吨的砂石。Some say before a gold piece is chosen, there's a ton of gravels that needs to be washed away first. 所以姐妹们，不要太注重你男人中生命里面目前的渣子。So, uh, sisters who are already married, don't focus on the impurities in your husband's life right now. 你今天要做的是照着上帝的吩咐，做你该做的，尽你的本分，好使你丈夫中生命中的黄金早日的出现。What you have to do is do it according to God's will, so that the gold within your husband will appear sooner than later. 黄金能够脱离那些沙石，需要人的帮助。in order for the gold pieces to show up, we, it needs to be washed away. Um, so the husband also requires sister's assistance to wash away the gravel in his life, the impurities in his life. I have served the Lord for 20 years, but if I did not have my wife's help, her assistance, I cannot do what I can do today. Sister, what you have to show your husband is love, forbearance, holiness, righteousness, uprightness, goodness, and gentleness, and humbleness, and your fear of God. If you are able to do all of the above, your husband will love you to death. You will most definitely able to affect him. You will be able to be the good wife in God's eye. Behind a successful man, there's always a great woman. In God's eye, similarly, you have the wife who silently provides for the husband. We have to truly fear the Lord. It is from within, it's continuous. 
May God help us. Of course, that requires sacrifice. Because uh, obeying, submitting to your husband, it requires sacrifice, submitting to him. Again, I want to I want again say it's not because the wife is a little bit lower than husband. It's because the function uh, that God has for men and women in a marriage in is different. We have to obey and submit from within. It is not pretense at one point. I can tell some are pretending. We can see, I have been married for a while, so I can very easily see that you were fighting before and then you pretend that you love each other when I appear. You can see that it's very challenging for them to pretend to be obeying. May God help us to have the submission from within so that it comes off. It's true and real. If you are truly a pure, uh, a holy lady just like Sarah, you will be able to do it. If Sarah is able to do it, you are able to do it as well. Should we fight for it? When we truly do, the, do that, your life will be edified, you'll be a step higher. Oftentimes, tragedies occur because uh, wives are not willing to submit to their husbands. Only in Christ can a woman express their true value. Because you are like Christ. Here we see that the adornment and submission are uh, intertwined here. In worldly view, only if you're able to sub only when you submit to your husband, you're able to conquer your husband. If through, from uh, Peter's word is, when you submit to your husband, you're able to uh, show Christ, and through that, you're able to win your husband over for Christ. Amen. So sisters, you have to uh, submit to uh, do your duties. Amen. Uh, of course, I'm sure the brothers are very happy hearing up to this point. Uh, hallelujah. Of course, it's not just that. If you wish your sister, your wives continue to submit to you, what is your duty, man? Husband's duty is to respect your wife. What is the foundation of respect? Here, verse 7, it says, Husbands, in the same way, be considered as you live with your wives. In the same way, it is God, that means it's God's command. Being considerate, it is meaning knowledge and understanding. Uh, living together meaning uh, together. If you don't go according to what is mentioned here, you will not be able to uh, live according to God's will with your wife. I mentioned earlier when we go to parties or weddings, all the ladies are very pretty, very beautiful. Of course, normal men, we all want to uh, marry the most beautiful woman. But of course, the most, even the most beautiful wife, certain times, she's not very beautiful, not very cute. Here, it did not mention about love. 
Respecting your wife actually also means love your wife. Today, we have to fear the Lord. It is God's command. Here, respect your wife, it means to love and care and respect her all your life. So therefore, brothers, as a husband, you have to use true knowledge to respect your wife and not uh, the worldly will. Many brothers, even though after being married for many years, still doesn't understand the, their wife very well. Maybe you spend excessive amount of time for your career. But you don't spend the extra time to understand and get to know your wife on a deeper level. So many uh, husbands say, oh, I already have my wife, I'm all done. Even though you already married her, you have to continue to be in love uh, with her. You have to uh, be considerate and live with your wife together. Because she is a weaker partner. As a man, you have to understand men and women are different. Uh, men are more logical. Women are more emotional. For the most part, for the most part. Uh, when your wife is a bit weaker on certain areas, you have to be considerate. For example, I can pick up 200 pounds worth of stuff, but my wife can't even pick up 50 pounds. And the garbage in my house, I never ask my wife to do it, I always do it. Emotionally, the a woman requires more emotional care than men. Man, you might forget your own uh, your own birthdays, but you cannot forget your wife's birthday. I was very busy yesterday, but I remember it was my wife's birthday, so regardless, I put everything down, went to get grocery, came back, brought cake for her to celebrate her birthday. If you forget, mm, try it. <laughs> a wives, you are a weaker partner than your husband. It does not mean that the wife is below you. It actually means the wife is more fragile. So the husbands, you have to provide extra protection, extra love for your wife. Just like the pupil in our eyes, it is very weak, but it's very important for us, so we have to provide extra protection. And if you know uh, some people who likes to collect uh, things that are uh, older, um, you know they care for very, very uh, for extra protection. Because if you accidentally drop it, it'll break it, shatters completely. Or if you uh, accidentally bump it into something, a crack will cause uh, issues. So husbands, and, so husbands, in the same way, you have to protect your wife as if it's extremely fragile. So I know um, men, husbands, we're often uh, scatterbrained. We have so many things going on. We're not very considerate. Don't we have to learn? We have to learn to be considerate, respect our wives. 
So there is a famous uh, counselor in America. There was a uh, time frame that he was helping out in the house doing house chores. But then he realized doesn't matter how much he has done, the sister was still or the wife was still not satisfied. They were both Christians. Uh, so therefore the the husband went to a sister and the church, older sister in church and complained to her. See, he says, I'm taking care of children for my wife. I'm cooking, cleaning, but washing the toilet for my wife. And he continued on for a while. And the older sister says, okay, stop, 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 enough, I understood. So the problem here is the word for, you're doing for your Even though you've done a lot, but you're saying you're doing for your wife. Don't you understand the house belongs to the two of you? You're doing not just for her, you're doing for yourself. You have to make your sister, your wife, understand that you love her. Not that you have done everything for her in order to receive her praise. Husbands, you have to respect your, the, the specialness of your wife. You have to understand her specialty and how God created her, created her differently. Uh, once a husband said to uh, his wife, He says, I just don't understand how God created you so beautifully, but so dumb. If you are a wife and you heard your husband saying that to you, how would you respond? And you might start an, uh, the fight. So the sister responded very cutely. She says, I'm so beautiful so that you chased after me so eagerly. But because I'm so dumb, I chose to marry you. If I was very smart, you wouldn't have been here. As a husband, you have to take time to understand your woman. It's very important. What does she need from you? If you understand her very well, you already know. Don't compare your own wife to another woman. You can't compare. It's uncomparable. It's just like how God created me so short. I can't break, say to God, God, why did you create me taller? You can't compare. You can't compare your wife to someone else's wife. You chose her. Your wife is your first one, your best one, your only one, and your last one. It is very important. You have to understand that phrase. It is actually the Bible, biblical teaching. Therefore, you have to respect her. In order for you to respect her, you have to be fearful of the Lord, and then you understand how to love her. And when you understand her, you have to have practice. So therefore, we look at the practice. I've spoken this to a brother multiple times. You have to love your, your wife. Because I noticed that he just truly does not love his wife. They marry before I did, and but I see that she does not love her. 
I continuously, repetitively say to him, you have to love your wife. He often responds to me, how do I love her? Is she worthy of my love? How? I said, how do you love your daughter? How do you love your own mother? How about use that same love and move it towards and move it onto your wife? It is very important. I, I said it before, every man wished that you marry the most beautiful woman. And I, and I know many husbands, they marry very beautiful ladies, but then the lady tends to uh, age quicker. It's because the husband, you're not showing your respect to her, you're not being considerate for her. So therefore, she's often a very sorrowful. Even to a point that she's washing her face with tears. We men, as we uh, we people, we often compare with others. Men likes to compare. Oh, his wife and my wife. Oh, how come they're about the same age, but she has a lot. My wife has a lot more wrinkle than she does. Oh, you may, uh, you may try to comfort yourself. Oh, God created uh, his wife, you know, more pretty. But do you reflect on your own, looking at your wife, how often she cried because of you? It's because you did not love her. Because you did not respect her. Here it says, uh, why, uh, husbands, be, be considerate and live with your wife. Uh, wives, you have to get emotional support from the husband. A married woman, the most important thing they need to receive is that they know that their husband loves her. My husband who has chased after me when we first started dating, even up to this 40 years, 50 years later, he still loves me the same way. Maybe some things that he requires of me is a little bit too much. But as a husband, you have to understand, she is a weaker partner. She has different needs than you, you do. My wife often forget, my, forget about my birthday. I never uh, get upset over her. I, I was scared that I would forget her birthday, so therefore I set an alarm on my phone to remind me her birthday. I can't compare it to her in a way that oh I don't even uh, I don't even bother if you don't remember my birthday you should not feel the same way. So men we have a deeper voice so sometimes when you speak a little bit louder she will say you yell at me. I don't know brother sister she have that thought. It's because she's weaker than you. Have to love and protect her. Respect her. Sometimes she'll add too much salt in the dish that she makes. How do you respond? If you say, ah, I'm going to die because of your dish today, you will fight. You 
you may you should probably say oh uh, thank you for cooking dinner today but if in the future if you can add just a little bit less salt that would be even more wonderful uh, you can't com you can't blame her because there's so many things going on in her life, uh, and that she might forget that she already added a, tea a, a teaspoon of salt. Even if she did not meet up to your expectation in one area, you should not be going broadcasting to the world about her fault. When your sister is not the most lovable at that time, that's actually the time that you need to love her the most. You have to respect her. Doesn't matter how busy you are, you have to take time to be with her. When your when your wife come to talk to you, doesn't matter what is in your hand, you have to set it down to sit with her, and look at her. And you have to sit with her, look at her eyes, and listen to every phrase she's telling you. You have to listen to the words from her heart. Men, we're often very straightforward. We tell you what we want. However, women, we tell you half of the phrase and want you to guess what we're about to say. Why do they do that? Because they want to get your love from you guessing the right phrase on the second part. So wherever I go, I tend to often purchase something for my wife. So I was getting a pair of shoes for my wife, and then there was a brother next to me, and he's like, Oh, I want to get the same, I want to get a pair of shoes for my wife too. So I know what my wife likes, so I chose choose the right style, and I know her size, which is six, and then I grabbed the one. So the brother didn't know where to start, what to what to look for. And so I asked him, so what's the matter? And he says, I, there's so many different styles. I don't know what my wife's shoe size is either. If you're that type of husband, if your sister's not mad at you, it's a surprise. Right? It is the most basic, my basic foundation, basic understanding. Therefore, we have to learn to respect your wife, our wife. Praise her often. At least thank her. And hug your wife from behind, say, hey, thank you for taking care of the kids. It's been challenging the whole day. Even she might not be the best today, she still needs, uh, still needs you to reaffirm her. Even if she does something wrong today, she needs your encouragement to tell her, hey, it's okay, we'll do better tomorrow, next time. You would not get better if you don't, and if you don't get up from your mistakes. If you are not able to love your wife, you will be suffering along with her. And you set up a bad example for your children. If you learn to, if you know and learn how to love your wife, you will be happy, your wife will be happy, your family will be happy. Most importantly, God will be very pleased. This is a learning process. And through this process, our spiritual life will be edified and will be a step higher as well.
Respecting your wife, it means respecting her whether she does something good or something that's not so good. There is a purpose, and the purpose is so that your marriage will be considered good in the eye of God. And you will, your marriage will enter into the beauty of God's promise. Your love, your, your life will be edified, and your prayers will be answered. Husbands, you have to make an extra effort to make your wife happy. Some husbands say, hey, or men say, I love my wife a lot. I love my wife more than she loves me. Are there any men like this? When you say you love your uh, you love your wife enough, it's actually merely enough. When you say, Oh, it's enough, you're actually already at the edge of a cliff, you're already done, no more. You, uh, as a husband, it's only when you overhear your wife telling other people that uh, her husband loved her, that's when you have succeeded. You saying you love your, your wife a lot is not merely enough. It's only when your wife telling other people that my husband loves me, that's when it's a plus sign. To me, I, I, I feel like, oh, whoever marry me will be very lucky because I can love my wife very well. So then I, uh, after I get married, I compare myself to the people uh, in the world, in society. I realize, hey, I do love my wife a lot more. And of course, 20 years ago, I became a preacher. Uh, yes, of course, I love my wife even more. So then at one time I look over to my wife and say, hey, honey, uh, do you think I love you a lot? <laughs> so then my wife looked at me and she goes, you think you love me enough? I give you 85 points. I thought to myself, at least 95. She says 85. So I can see that what I think of a 95 versus what she views, there's some discrepancy. Should I continue on to get better? I don't know, brothers here, whether your, your sisters, your wife gave you 85. Even if you have 85, should you keep on going, do better? So to, according to ourselves, we feel like we're fantastic, our points are great. You have to go love your, uh, your wife according to the way she wanted to be loved. Therefore, you have to sacrifice even more. Love in a way as if you're in debt to the to other. You have to often feel like you don't love your wife enough. Last, even last week, I realized I don't love my wife enough. I need to do better. You have to do better. Amen? Amen? It is very important. When God brought uh, Eve in front of Adam, what did Adam say? He says, You are the bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This 
It is a phrase from deep within from Adam towards uh, his spouse. Wow, so Eve, when she hears that, she's sweet from within. She knows for a fact that Adam is truly loving her and loving her to death. So husbands, you have to say same same way. You are to your wife that you are my you the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. I will love you, uh, and I will be willing to sacrifice and respect you. She will be willing to be your servant for the rest of her life. May God help us. We have to learn to say these kind of phrases. So that you you make your sister, your wife understand that you truly love her. And what is the uh, the practice? Now we go to the result of respect. Husband, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life. As heirs with you of great, the gracious life, gift of life. Here, this phrase means that we are all equal in God's eyes. We just have different functionalities. When husband and wife are intertwined together, your prayer life will not have uh, stumbling blocks. Only when we pray together, we have God's blessing and we'll, have, we'll be able to co-labor together. So therefore, husbands, don't make your sisters shed tears. If you make your wife upset, your prayer will have stumbling blocks. When Clinton, President Clinton was going for his second, uh, second presidency, um, his, he, him and his wife came to this place. Someone said to Clinton, Oh, Hillary's uh, first lover, uh, he lived in this place. So Clinton turned around to Hillary and said, Oh, if you married the, uh, first, your first lover, you would not be the first lady today. If you were Hillary, what would you have said? So she turns around and says, Oh, if you did not marry me, you will not become the president. So therefore, husbands uh, and wives, you are like sculptor. Don't complain that God did not give you a good enough husband or wife. Your husband or your wife is someone you personally chose. Mm, just like a piece of wood, you, uh, you're, you're just like a piece of wood tape, uh, chosen, uh, trying to be sculpted. So you, uh, husband and you, wife, you are given by God, you have to continue to be sculpted. Just like the the song that we the hymn that we sang earlier, return back to uh, what God has created us. So that we can be the good uh, husband and wife in God's eyes. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you. That you have given us your words. Although we are weak and we uh, we owe you stuff, we're in debt of you. Yeah, we have an almighty God. We are willing to submit to your will. 
so that brother and sister who are already in marriage, that our marriage will be glorifying to you. So or the next generation who are headed towards marriage, help them understand the importance and the duty of a husband and a wife. So that every marriage would glorify you, God, and also edify others. So that the marriage can be a blessing for ourselves, be, a, um, be showing glory to you, and also uh, an example for our children. We give you all the glory. We pray this in the name of Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen.